What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming back. Guys, Hot Toys has opened up the pre-order window for the scorched Xenomorph from Alien Romulus. Now, some of you keen-eyed viewers might have noticed this looks a little bit different than the one that was teased about a month ago. So is this the one we want? Is this the one we were hoping for? Do you think there's going to be another variant? Let's talk about this figure and what could come next. Stick around if you like the video, hit the like button, smash the subscribe if you're new to The Ben Thomas Show, and let's get into it. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Ben Thomas. Okay, everybody, welcome back. So, a couple things to address first. I really enjoyed Alien Romulus, and I was surprised because I definitely had lost some of my love for the franchise, similar to how truthfully I'd felt about the Predator franchise. When the film Prey had come out, I wasn't really all that excited for it and loved it, and this is very much in the same vein as that. I went to the theater to see this with friends, some of which loved the Alien franchise and some of which were kind of like me, a little bit lukewarm, and we all, I would say, left receptively feeling like that was a badass movie. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, I think it's on Disney Plus now or one of those services. Definitely take a look, uh, especially if you're not a little nervous of aliens and that kind of uh, genre. But I will say, the aliens, while they were a standout piece here, I also really liked the human characters in the in the film, and the xenomorphs were just as cool, if not cooler, in their designs as what I feel like I've seen in the past. Now. Have there been other aliens that maybe you like more, maybe you'd want more in your collection? Yeah, potentially, the big chap being kind of one of those. But I will say, most of us who are Hot Toys collectors in this current generation have missed on the previous iterations. And one thing that I'm appreciating about Hot Toys is not only are they giving us something that's specific to the Romulus film, if maybe that's your entry point to this franchise, but also they've redesigned the body, you're seeing an extendable inner jaw with the Xenomorph's mouth. They have two different like carpuses, which is essentially the headpiece that goes on top. So you can switch it out for a battle damaged look or this kind of cleaner look. I love the fact that there's a little bit of translucency there that you can see that skull underneath. It's so freaking cool. You can see the juiciness in the mouth and like wild. I also love that this comes with an articulated face hugger. That in itself is almost its own character. Think about it, like you could put like just a, a standard, one of those like marine figures that you can buy for like 110 bucks in the display just with the face hugger over top of it and that in itself would be a badass display for this. Now, talking about display space, this figure comes in at 17 inches tall or just slightly under. So it's bigger than your average character, that's for sure. You're gonna need to kind of account for that display space, especially with the articulated wired tail that they had to it. But look at this pose here. I mean, this almost looks like a superhero landing pose to me, which is hilarious when you think about it, but Love the fact that this is articulated enough that you can squat this down so you can shrink it into your display a little bit if you need a little bit more of that head clearance or depending where it's at. Or you can have it standing up very broad like, you know, tail wrapped around the base kind of how you see it here. And that could be a really freaking cool look as well. I also really like that they've given us lots of different hand swap outs. I think that the joints, the way that this body is actually designed, really hides those joints because typically I don't love jointed figures. I find that it actually breaks my immersion for how I feel about the character in my display. It feels more like a toy and less like a essentially a six scale representation of that scary ass xenomorph creature in your display. And I think that that's really important. Immersion is one of the reasons that hot toys are what I collect. I really like that movie realistic feel and I feel like this doesn't lose it. Actually, I think the Carnage figure from uh, Venom vs. Carnage back in the day, they did a great job there for the same reasons. While that was a jointed figure, depending on how it's designed or posed, depending on how it's posed, you could totally hide those uh, joints and seams, and I think that that's great. I love the coloration here. I love the bumpiness and the, like, kind of the battle-damaged kind of texture that he has. It does look like it's going to be very visceral, like you're going to be able to really feel that texture on the body when you hold it in your hands. And it comes with a light-up LED diorama display base, which has scorched on it. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about as well in this video, because when we saw this teased a month or two ago, um, 
you know, we were all very excited because we were seeing things like Predator. We were th seeing things like the T-1000. We were seeing things like the Xenomorph. And for us, nostalgic old school collectors or maybe even the new school folks who are just getting into those franchises, that was amazing. Those old figures now are showing their age and we needed some new blood, new representation of our favorites in the collection, right? But the Xenomorph looked a little different in that original prototype stage. Now, it could be a couple things. It could just be that it was still very kind of new prototype. They were just showing off what they'd started and they hadn't fully finished the design of the texturing in the body. You notice like in areas like the traps, for example, on the creature, it does look a little different, certainly more textured in this version. It's interesting that they've called it the Scorched version because it does look like it's got, again, battle damage, some levels of scorching essentially on the character itself, which that first version doesn't look like it has all that much in there. So it poses the question to me, are we going to get two different versions of the Xenomorph or was what was teased just kind of an early interpretation of the final result that we see now here on the screen. At first I thought, well, maybe this would be more of the battle damage look and that's what they're starting with. And that first version that we saw that prototype is more of the, like the clean look because the base is the same minus some of that kind of gooeyness that's on top. And I felt like you could see the skull in the head of that first version that we saw a little bit more. But with the fact that this comes with the two interchangeable carpuses, I feel like they're giving you that battle damage look and clean look in one package. And in one package, you're looking at about $305 on Sideshow right now. For a larger figure like this, with this many face changes and LED light up base, hand changes, and a whole, what I want to call, almost second figure in there being that articulated face hugger, I actually think 305 is a very reasonable price. And even if they did give us another version, it would have to be pretty significantly different. And I don't think that that prototype is significantly different enough to necessarily justify two in the collection. But you could always justify two of these in the collection, let's be honest, because even in the movie Romulus, there's one point in the film, if you haven't seen it, no spoilers, but there are multiple Xenomorphs floating around. You could definitely create a display filled with these guys if you really wanted to army build them. The only downfall is that they would have all the same battle damage for the most part, with the exception of that faceplate that you could change. But I gotta say, Hot Toys, bravo this year. Literally bravo, because I honestly feel like Hot Toys has had one of the biggest years that they've had since I started collecting 14 years ago. Not only have they kept pace with other companies and honestly outpaced them, I'm talking about Inart, for example, that Joker that they've given us. I mean, I think it absolutely rivals the Inart Joker, if not better in some respects. Hot Toys has given us the LED bases and the USB powered uh, options. More figures are coming with rolling eye system now. More figures are coming with more intricate diorama display bases. I think if we're talking about awards, which we actually are on the YouTube channel collecting weekly every Tuesday now going into the end of the year, Hot Toys has to have a most improved award on their mantle this year, in my opinion. They've hit it out of the park. And to be honest, it's actually making prioritizing my money a little bit hard because it feels like every character they give us right now, minus maybe the John Wick. I know some of you thought that I was a little too happy with the likeness there. Fair enough. I gave John Wick an eight and a half. Some of you guys are giving him a five. Like that is art in a nutshell. And how cool is that? That we can all see art differently. But some of these, man. Like, if you're a fan of the original franchises, how do you not get these in the display? But also, how do you justify the amount of money that these are starting to add up to? Because while these are very reasonable prices, this is not a hobby for everybody. And if you go to ham, it'll burn your wallet out way too quickly. For me, this is a must-have figure in the display. And as I said, I might look at getting like a you know, some kind of marine figure to go along with it, with that face hugger on it. Or honestly, even like, it would be funny, you could put that face hugger on almost any character in your display just for some cool pictures. Lastly, there's always that chance that the reason that they've changed even the name on the figure base from what we saw from that prototype version a couple months ago to now could be licensing, right? Maybe they couldn't just call it the Xenomorph. Maybe they had to give it something else to get around licensing. So that's a possibility as well. I wouldn't say that that's definitive proof that we're gonna get a second variant of this figure. And at the end of the day, they've clearly put the love into this because even just the paint applications on the face hugger are insane, let alone the character itself. And with all the swap outs and all the changes for the price point, this for me 
is coming home. But I pose the question back to you guys. What are your thoughts on the Xenomorph? Is this one that you're picking up? Yes or no? Did you like, like the Alien Romulus film? I thought the girl in the film, to me, she should have played Ellie in the Last of Us television series. No shame against Bella Ramsey, but as I was watching her in the movie, I was like, man, that looks like Ellie from the video game. Like, it was wild, and I really like that actress. But I don't necessarily feel like I actually need any of the human characters in this movie. I really just wanted the Xenomorph or a Xenomorph in the collection. Xenomorph, if that's how you guys like to pronounce it, depending. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Correct me in the comments. But guys, are you picking this up? Yes or no? What are your thoughts on it? And do you think that there's a possibility we're going to get another variant version of this? Like I'm speculating from that prototype? Or was that just an early prototype representation and this is truly the final result of it? Either way pretty freaking happy. Want to hear from you guys in the comments down below. But if you like the video, hit the like button, smash the subscribe if you're new to the Ben Thomas show. And guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody. It's gone. It's all gone.